all right, we having some fun now, right? We having some fun. We figuring this out. We starting to put things together. Hopefully, after seeing a couple in class and a couple here, you're starting to really put the pieces together and make sense of it. So hopefully, you don't even need to watch these two last videos. You're able to just kind of look at it and check your answers and your work and make sure that everything's right. So I would encourage you first to see if you can just work this problem out. And then go ahead and push play and check your answers or fast forward, you know, whatever you need to do. So here we go. We've got a nursery selling Kentucky bluegrass seed for five seventy five per pound and tall fescue seed for four fifty per pound. So I'm gonna put that information in right now. I I've got Kentucky bluegrass, which is five seventy five per pound, and I've got tall fescue for four fifty per pound. All right. The nursery sells a mixture of the two kinds of seed for five twenty five per pound. So there's the mixture, five twenty five. Now just looking at these, is five twenty five closer to four fifty or is it close to five seventy five? Okay, well, hopefully you recognize it was closer to the Kentucky bluegrass, the 575. Now, since it's closer to that, that means we should have more of the Kentucky bluegrass in our mixture, which hopefully we'll see in just a minute. All right, so here we go. Now, K is going to represent the amount of Kentucky bluegrass. Okay, so K is the amount of Kentucky bluegrass. Now, it says the nursery uses in five pounds of the mixture. So the mixture is going to be five pounds. Now, that means the tall fescue has to be whatever's left over. So we start with 5. K of them are Kentucky bluegrass. And so the rest, 5 minus K, is going to be the tall fescue. All right? Now, from that point, you don't really need this column. If you want it, you can. You can go 5.75K. You can go 450 times 5 minus K. I like putting the variable behind. You don't necessarily have to do that, but that's how I do it. And then 5 times 5.25. It doesn't matter. It's multiplication for heaven's sakes. Okay, so what we're going to do, right? Again, remember, this is what we want it to come out to. This is the total weight, right? But this is what we want the final cost to be. Some of it has this cost, some of it has this cost. We want the final weighted average to come out as this. So you could actually already put that down on the right side of your equation, the 5.25. All right, so now we're going to put together the left side of the equation. So remember the left side is we're going to take the amount, 5.75, and multiply it by its weight, right there, plus 450 times its weight, which is 5 minus k. Now, on the bottom, we are going to divide by 5, okay, because that is the total weight. Now, if you watch the other video, this should make sense because we're taking the piece times its weight plus the other cost times its weight, and we're going to divide by the total weight, which is 5. Okay, so now from this point, we should be able to solve. We're going to, I like doing the multiply by 5 first. Okay, so that we get that thing off the bottom. You can distribute this and put the k's together as well. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so we'll go those cancel each other out. So we've got 5.75k plus, uh, and then, okay, yep, I'm not going to do another step yet. I'm going to go 450 times 5 minus k equals 525 times 5, which is, you can do this on your calculator or do it off on the side, but it should be 26.25. So now from this point, we now need to get those k's together, but this one's inside the parentheses. So the only way to get it out, I know in class I said you don't have to do the distribution first, but the only way to be able to put this k with that k is if we distribute so that we can get it out of the parentheses. So in this case, yes, you are going to have to do it. Okay, so we got this. 450 times 5 would be, holy smokes, I don't know. Yes, I do. It's 2250. <laughs> And then minus 450k, which equals 2625 still. Okay, so now we can put the like terms together, the 575 and the 450. We put the 575 and the 450 together, we get 1.25k, because that's plus and that's minus. They're already on the same side, so I don't need to do any moving. I just put the like terms together. Plus 2250 equals 26. 25. And so now I can subtract the 2250. And I'm running out of room here. Mm, subtract the 2250 minus 2250. And I'm going to go up here because I'm completely out of room now. So I'm going to go 125k 
equals, and then if I subtract, I get 5. Oh, that's not going to give me enough space, is it? Let's go 5, and then let's see, borrow 15, 12 minus 5 is 75, and then 15, oh, 5 minus 2 is 3, and uh, that's it, 375. And so now I'm going to divide both sides by 1.25. 1.25, which will give me k equals, ooh, ain't that convenient, k equals 3. Now, that means I got 3 of this, and I'm going to have 5 minus 3. Ooh, 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 that's taxing my brain, but it's 2. Okay, so now notice at the beginning we said there should be more Kentucky bluegrass because the final price was closer to that, meaning its weight had to be greater, right? And so that is greater than two. So there you go. That one's done. Let's do one more. This, this, this is just so much fun, isn't it? it, it once we start to get it, it's kind of it, it's kind of neat. All right. So let's do one more. Okay. So we're gonna do this one. And oh my gosh, there's a big, huge chicken. There he is. Big chicken. Big chicken all over the page. Help from the attack of the killer chickens. Okay, never mind. Chicken's gone. Okay, so here we go. This time without a table. We got a pineapple jink with 15% pineapple juice. How much pure pineapple juice should be added to 8 quarts of the pineapple drink to obtain a mixture containing 50%? Okay, so what have we got here? What are the things we are going to mix together? And then what is going to be the result? So we've got the 15% pineapple juice. I know, P and J is supposed to be peanut butter and jelly. Notice that there's not an A, so it's not peanut butter and jelly, it's pineapple juice. Okay, what else do we have? We have pure pineapple juice. Now, pure pineapple juice means 100% pineapple juice. No, it's not pajamas, it's pineapple juice. For heaven's sakes, children, get it straight. Okay, then we've got a mixture containing 50% pineapple juice. Okay, so... We take these two and we put them together to get that one. Now, what, is the, what are the things that we're going to be using? Now, this is very similar to the one that we used at, on the first one with the basal. Remember with the different percentages, right? So we had the amount and we had the, um, the it, it was ounces with the basal, but this one is not in ounces. So we've got an amount in quarts, I guess. And then we have the, the amount in percent. All right, so this obviously you should be able to fill that in, 15%, 100%, and 50%. Now, really, you don't need this table. You should be starting to get to the point where you're recognizing things, you know, that I've got percentages and I've got quarts. But the table will help you kind of organize your thoughts and put things together. So. Now I need to figure out the amount of quarts. Well, here it says that um, added to 8 quarts of pineapple drink. Okay, there we go. So there are 8 quarts of the pineapple drink. That's this one right here, the 8 quarts. So I've got 8 quarts of that. So this is a little bit different than the other one. Okay, now it says how much pure pineapple juice. Okay, so pure pineapple juice. That's this one. Okay, so I'm going to put a P. P stands for pure pineapple. Okay? Now, if there are 8 quarts of 15% and P quarts of 100%, how much are we going to end up with? Hopefully you got A plus P because I don't know what else you're going to come up with there. So, we got A plus P. So now, we should be able to put these things together. Now, keep in mind, this is the total weight. Right? This is the amount of each thing, how important each of these percents is. The more of 1% that you have, the more important that percentage is. All right. Now, that means that this is the overall average percent that we're looking for. So that's the thing that's going to go on the other side of the equation that equals 50. And you know what? I'm going to actually just put it up here because otherwise I know already I'm going to run out of space. So now I need to take the percent, 15 times 8, and add the 100 times P, 
And then we're going to divide that by the total amount, which is 8 plus P. Holy smokes, there's an 8 plus P on the bottom. What am I going to do with the bar water? Okay, now we learned before that anything on the top is in its own little world. Did you know that everything on the bottom is in its own little world? Which means that this is all this stuff divided by 8 plus P. Now, one of the things I said before is that I hate fractions, right? So I hate fractions, but even worse than fractions is when I have two of the same variable. I got two P's here, so that's even worse. But even worse than that is when I have a variable on the bottom of the fraction. That's got to be the first thing we get rid of. So my first step is going to be I got to get this variable off the bottom. So since I am dividing by 8 plus P here, I am going to multiply by 8 plus P here. Now, there is another way to do this, but I'm not going to talk about it until next week. So if your tutor shows you something else, say, yes, sir, Mr. Tutor, but we're not learning that till next week. So, so can you show me the other way to do this one? Okay, so those cancel out. We've got 15 times 8 plus 100p equals 50 times 8 plus p. So I'm going to, I need to get the p's together. The only way to get the p's together is if I distribute this. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute it. 15 times 8 is, holy smokes, holy smokes, holy smokes. Well, 4 times 15 is 60, so that's got to be 120. Okay, plus 100p equals 50 times 8. Well, four t 2 times 50 is 100, so that's got to be 400 plus 50p. And so from here, we should be able to solve. I want all the p's together. So before I move anything else, I'm going to get my p's together. So I'm going to subtract 50p. There's no fractions, so I don't really care about anything else. That'll be 50p equals 400. Now I've got to get the p by itself. Now that I've only got one p, Right? So I'm going to subtract the 128, which means I got 50p equals 3272. Oh no. Oh no. I'm going to get a decimal. So? So you got a decimal. Why should I care? Okay, so it should be 50, 22, 4, 54.4. Ish? No, 5.44. I apologize. Ooh. Can't have 54.4. What are you thinking about? Okay, 5.44. Okay, and if you don't believe me, then you pull up your calculator and you go, oh yeah, Mr. Bowder, let me show you. 272 divided by 50 equals, I told you it was 5.44, but you didn't believe me. So now we're going to get rid of that. So P equals 5.44. Yes, you got a decimal. Decimals are life. So, we got 5.44 for P, and we've answered the question. And please note that 50 is closer to 15 than it is to 100. Therefore, we need more of this than we do of this. That's our check. It worked. All right. Well, there's your four questions. Hopefully, you were able to work those okay. This last one was a little bit more difficult because of that stinky 8 plus P on the bottom. But if you get rid of that first then it simplifies things as you see from the problem. Go ahead and watch the other video which is going to go over rate and time which I'm going to tell you I'm going to do a little bit differently and it's okay. Alright, so good luck.